DHH had a take on microservices in small teams that's getting a lot of attention. Microservices is the software industry's most successful confidence scam. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. And while I agree with what he's pointing out, all of these types of conversations miss what actually matters. This is not about microservices or a monolith or small teams. And he specifically calls out small teams. Small teams run in a shared context. That's their superpower. Everyone can reason end to end. I absolutely agree with this, but this has nothing to do with microservices or a monolith. Now what's implied here is microservices is much more difficult to understand the full context. I agree given how most people think of microservices. You can think of, well, I got all these services, and yeah, I don't know how anything happens end to end and what service interacts with with what service. Yes, that's a problem. It's a problem, but not the root cause. Before I get to that, I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's an event native data platform that feeds real time business critical data with historical context and fine grain streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, check out the link in the description. But the root of the problem is coupling. So if you have a high degree of coupling, let's say we're talking about we're in a monolith here. Yes, you'd be able to kind of navigate this a little bit better, try to understand how each different part of your system is interacting with a different part. And yes, it'll be much more difficult if all of a sudden these are all microservices and now you've introduced a network boundary. Microservices is a physical architecture choice. That's what you're choosing when you introduce it. You're introducing network boundaries. But regardless, if you have a monolith or microservices, whether you're a small team or not, the key is to define logical boundaries. There's a difference between logical boundaries and physical boundaries. Half the issue here is that microservices define and force you to be a one-to-one. -one. Meaning what we defined as a logical boundary of service A, B, and C, they likely end up with their own source repository. Even if it's a monorepo, you have your own source that's specific for that logical boundary, which guess what? Gets built and turned into some type of deployable, whether it be some executable, a container, whatever, some unit of deployment. We've turned everything into a one-to-one-to-one. -to -one -to -one. That can be different when you often think about a monolith or what people would classify as a modular monolith. You have all these different uh, logical boundaries within your monolith, within the same source code base, that gets turned into a single deployable unit. You can build a monolith with strong logical boundaries. You could be doing the same with microservices. On the flip side, you can build an absolute turd pile of a monolith because you have weak boundaries or none at all. Same goes with microservices. What we're really arguing about here with microservices is the cost of introducing a network boundary worth it. And he points out that cost. Then comes the operational farce. Each service demands its own pipeline, secrets, alerts, metrics, dashboards, permissions, backups, and rituals of appeasement. I don't think that list is exaggerated at all. It's a lot of complexity and has a high cost. So the question is, do you get enough value from being able to deploy independently for the cost? This is about a trade-off. He continues with, one bug now requires a multi-service autopsy. A feature release becomes a coordinated exercise across artificial borders you invented for no reason. Uh, hang on there. You just have a high degree of coupling. Artificial borders? Absolutely you want borders. Should they be artificial? No, they should be cohesive around the capabilities of your system. If you have a high degree of coupling, that's your problem. That's not just some random thing. It wasn't invented that you created this. You created the coupling. Whether you have microservices, is it going to be much more difficult to debug, troubleshoot because of that network boundary? Absolutely. I'm not disputing that. But the root cause here is because of all the coupling, which directly relates to the comment, you don't deploy anymore, you synchronize a fleet. No, that's because of coupling. More specifically, what people feel the pain of is temporal coupling. If you're in your monolith and you had the same type of degree of coupling, you might not feel as much pain, but that coupling is still there and the pain's still there. It's just hidden. When you introduce that network, uh, network boundary, it just exposed it. Because now you have all the distributed nature of HTTP, gRPC, whatever, however you're distributing over the network, retries, latency, it's just exposing it all of a sudden. But the mess was already there. By the way, if you prefer a full write-up, I have all my diagrams and all the examples in a blog post that's linked in the description. And here's what I think is one of the most important parts of this post. 
you are forced to define APIs before you understand your own business. If you're starting to build a system and you don't really understand yet what the domain is, what the business is, I always say defining logical boundaries or services are one of the most important things to do, but one of the most difficult things to do. You really need to understand the domain and how the interactions are going to work because you do not want a high degree of coupling. You want your logical boundaries to be as autonomous as you possibly can be. They're oftentimes little workflows, a part of bigger workflows. There shouldn't be a mess of coupling between boundaries. Typically that happens because you're more focused on the technical aspect than you are about the actual business behaviors and capabilities of your system. So while I agree that jumping into microservices and defining network boundaries immediately, that's gonna be much more difficult because it's harder to refactor. I think everybody can uh, agree on that. So yes, being in a monolith first, when you don't understand and you're trying to mold what the lowest logical boundaries are, yes, it's gonna be easier because it's easier to refactor. Which gets to what I like to call the loosely coupled monolith. If we think about three different logical boundaries that have contracts, things like for messages or potentially interfaces, implementation tests, we can see with my database here, maybe I have one database instance, but within that I have schemas that are specifically owned by a logical boundary. It's not a free for all of any logical boundary accessing data from another. More specifically what happens then is all your interactions because of workflows are done asynchronously via messaging if you can. That way we can see if I'm in a monolith, I have all three deployed together, there's absolutely nothing stopping you from carving one of them off and making it individually deployable because maybe it has a different cadence of what you wanna release it. The others can be separate. You started off as a monolith, you discover what your boundaries are and because you might have the need and enough value to make it independently deployable, you can, so as long as, again, the trade-off and the cost is worth it. But that's specifically because you need something independently deployable, possibly scalable, but again, I agree here, monolith scale. The claim that monoliths don't scale is one of the dumbest lies in modern engineering folklore. I agree. And the simplest example of this is with the WebQ worker pattern. Going back to when I said logical isn't physical, you can have more than one entry point or one executable or one deployable unit, even in your monolith. In my example here, I have one that's our HTTP API, could be sitting behind a load balancer and we're scaling that out. But I also have the exact same code base, but instead its entry point is actually listening to a queue, a message broker, an event log, and performing work asynchronously. Now on our database side, you could scale that up. You could scale that out depending on what type of database you're using or you're introducing read replicas, but there's so many different ways that you can scale a monolith. Jumping to independent deployability isn't necessarily the first thing you need to do for scale. Now, while I agree with a lot of what he wrote, I think it's kind of silly that we're still even talking about this this way. This isn't we got to go beyond the microservices good or microservices bad in a small team or whatever context. How about we start talking about the actual underlying issues here? Adding physical boundaries has a cost. That's what he was describing. Is the cost worth it? Well, you need to understand what the actual trade-offs are and what the value is. I think we need to get totally beyond this because fundamentally at the root of almost all of this is poor design and poor coupling. If, even if you decided, okay, I'm gonna go all in on microservices, and let's say you lived in an existing system and you knew what those logical boundaries should be. If you designed it correctly, you would not experience the pain of this, I have to navigate all these different services to understand this end to end flow and I don't get this context. You wouldn't have that problem because your services are contained to actually what they do. They're a part of a workflow. Are they part of a larger workflow? Yes. Would you have all this temporal coupling everywhere like a spaghetti hot distributed mess? No, you wouldn't. Like we're talking about what people are implementing and how they're doing it poorly as being like, let's not do this because people are doing it poorly. That's not the case. The case is manage coupling and understand when that network boundary is worth it. So my favorite part, get in the comments and let me know if this post resonated with you. If you haven't read it, I'll have a link to it in the description. Again, read it, let me know what your thoughts are. I don't doubt everybody can relate to it because the pain that he's describing is real. Unfortunately, what I'm getting at is I don't think we need to have this pain if we fundamentally understood better what we were doing. Get in the comments and let me know what you're thinking.
And if you enjoy topics like this, but want to interact with other developers, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. The link's in the description on how to join. And I really do appreciate everybody that supports my channel and has already joined. Again, thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.